we have uh, another video question coming in, and I was alerted by our team. This would be a great one to ask you specifically. So okay. uh, this is uh, coming in from Jeb in Bradenton. Uh, let's go next uh, to Jeb <coughs> in uh, Bradenton, Florida here on Track in the Comics. Hey, guys. This is Jeb from Bradenton, Florida. And I have a question regarding Milton and climate change. And I am a little bit concerned that storms like this may continue to appear and arise and still be pretty bad and not only just be pretty bad but actually get worse as time goes on get stronger get wetter and more frequent do you guys think that that's accurate and what do you think that we should do for our communities to prepare for this in the future Sorry, Jeff, I cut you off there at the end, but Jeff, take it away. Well, you know, that's right up my alley. As you would know, um, I have a degree in climate as well as my degree in atmospheric sciences. And I study this, and I would say this is my specialty. And I think there's no doubt that we are going to see more intense storms in the future. We're already seeing it. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> now when we see, us forecasters, when we see a storm in the Atlantic, we assume it's probably going to rapidly intensify. And we also assume, a lot of us at least, that it's probably going to get stronger than the models say it's going to. Just like this storm did. Just like Milton did. Just like Beryl did. You know, and to some degree, just like Helene did. Um, water temperatures are record hot in the Gulf. And by the way, they're record hot all over the Atlantic. They've never been this hot before. Uh, and they just keep getting hotter. You know what record we're breaking? We're breaking 2023. <laughs> 2024's water temperatures are warmer than 2023's, which were warmer than 2022's. As you add more heat, Storms get stronger, they more rapidly intensify. Now, we did a study, and JB knows all about this. Uh, <clears throat> I partnered last year with Columbia University. This year, I partnered with the Department of Energy, and we said, okay, let's use nine of our climate models, our best models. Let's project out into the future how hurricanes may change in the Bay Area and all across the Southeast if we warm as much as we think we're going to warm. And what we found was assuming that we continue emitting carbon dioxide because of the burning of fossil fuels and, and methane, we found that we would see triple the number of major hurricanes in Florida. So any one location in Florida can expect three times more major hurricane landfalls than now. On average, Tampa gets one about once every 100 years, but uh, by 2070, 2080, 2060, it's going to be once every 30 years, possibly. That's what we found. And I would say that 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 specific finding is debatable, but what's not debatable is we also found that rainfall rates will increase by 50%. We're already seeing that. In fact, there was a study on Hurricane Helene in the Carolinas finding that most of the area had 25 to 50% plus more rain because of human-caused climate change because the atmosphere is warmer, can hold more moisture, and storms are, more, are able to use that energy to produce more intense rainfall rates. And we found that hurricanes are likely to be 15 to 20% more intense just about 40 or 50 years from now. That was the study we did, and it's consistent with what we're seeing out in the field and with observations too. So thank you for your question because it's a very important question. By the way, the water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico right now were made 400 to 800 times more likely by climate change. So the intensity of heat in the Gulf was made over 400 times more likely because of human caused climate change. Now, I'm not just making the number up. We actually have a tool that tells us how much more likely climate change made it, and it comes from the folks at Climate Central who have an exclusive tool which allows us to kind of sample the ocean and figure out, okay, how much less likely would this have been if climate change didn't exist? And we find that climate change made this particular scenario in terms of water temperatures over 400 times more likely. 